Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. It's really great to have you. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm really happy that you're joining me today. Um, today is not gonna be a normal knitting chat video. It's um, today's video, I wanna talk about the Tennis Barn Soft for Women cat uh, pattern book, which came out in February of 2022 and has been really popular. Um, I've seen quite a few people talking about it and some of the patterns are really beautiful. Um, and I was determined to get my hands on this book because I really wanted to make some of the patterns from here. Um, but it's really hard to get in the U.S. I had to order it from the U.K. and it's even hard to get from a lot of European suppliers. So now that I have the book and I'm very familiar with what the patterns look like, um, I put together a list of dupes for all of the pattern in this, patterns in this book. Um, and if you're not, I feel like most people know what a dupe is, but if not, it's like pretty similar kind of same um, and anyway, the way that I found dupes for the patterns in this book is like a similar look. The gauge might be a little different. The yarn might be a little bit different, but it's going to, if by making the dupes of that I'm going to talk about, you'll get a very similar look to a lot of the patterns in this book. So I've scoured through Ravelry and just kind of off the top of my head thought of some really great options that are similar to the patterns in this book. Um, I have a list of all of these patterns on my Ravelry group, which is Friends of Anna, Anna Passy Trevino, if you'd like to join. It's a brand new feature that I'm offering for my little channel here and really excited about it. Um, and there's a list of all of the patterns I'm going to talk about there. I will also link them all down below in the show notes of this episode. And so we'll just get into it. And I'm just going to go through the patterns as they appear in the book. Um, and give you, I'll show a picture of the original pattern and then the um, kind of dupe that I'm talking about so that you can get a feel for the different options and talk you through them all. So um, this book is printed by Sendiskarn, which is a Norwegian yarn maker, and they also print patterns. There are, I believe, 16 patterns in this book, maybe fewer than that. I'm not exactly sure, but there are a number of patterns in this book. There are some sweater patterns. There are two dress patterns. There's a sock pattern slip over. Um, so lots of options in here. And they're very pretty, very like on trend, but also kind of, I would say like trendy classics in this book. Um, Sunday Scarn puts out a lot of pattern books. They put out probably at least six a year. Um, and they're always really beautiful. And so I'm just going to talk you through this book. And if this is something you enjoy, I'm happy to do more pattern dupe videos in the future. Um, so we'll just get started. So the first pattern that's in the book is for the Snowbell socks, which are a really pretty lace sock. I'm also going to talk about these patterns just as a side because this book is a paid for book. I'm not going to give you the details of the pattern beyond what Sunday's Garn provides on their website. Um, so this is a sock pattern that is knitted on 2.5 millimeter needles at a 29 stitch gauge. Um, and it has this really beautiful lace pattern and a little bit of a ruffle at the top. So when I was looking for dupes, I was interested in both the lace and the ruffle. So the construction technique might be a little bit different, but again, just looking for kind of a similar aesthetic. So I thought of two dupes for the Snowbell socks. The first, and one of them kind of covers the lace pattern and one of them covers the ruffle. So you could always combine these two patterns to get a very similar thing. You may have to do some mashing up and hacking, but that's the joy of duping. Um, so the first one that I found that I thought was quite similar is the Downton Abbey socks. They are, a, it's a free pattern made by a knitter called Urban. Um, it's available in French only. So just be aware. I did not realize that until just now, but I think, I believe it's charted. So if you can read a chart, the French may not be too difficult. You could also put it through a Google Translate. Um, and so that's option one. They are knit at a 31 stitch gauge, so a little bit of a smaller gauge than the original, um, and on a two and 2.5 millimeter needle. They have a very similar kind of circular lace pattern to them. Um, and I think they're very pretty. They have a similar aesthetic and a similar construction. Um, the second pattern that I thought of was the Midsummer Dancer pat socks, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland. Um, these socks are, have the same kind of ruffle around the top, and then they do have a lace pattern running down the foot. It's a little bit of a different lace pattern, but again, it's a similar kind of look as the Snowbell socks. 
Um, I just thought of one more that I do have um, that I haven't linked. Let me look in my favorites. And then a third option, which again is kind of more similar to the lace motif. This one does not have the ruffle, but again, you could look at some other free patterns. I know Drops has several free patterns with ruffles that you could take the ruffle from those patterns and then apply it to this pattern. Um, these are the Starburst Socks by Paintbox Yarns. It's a free pattern um, on Ravelry. It's available in English. These are knit at a 32 stitch gauge um, on 2.5 and 2.25 millimeter needles. And they have a kind of a similar round lace pattern. Um, these are just three dupes that I thought of. Um, if you have more suggestions, that's also it would also be great to kind of comment them down below and we can kind of crowdsource some more suggestions. Um, the second pattern in the Sunda Scarn book is the Amy Slipover, which I think is a pretty popular pattern from this book. It's really interesting and unique. It's got a big, thick, chunky collar, and then it's a slipover that has ties on the side. It's really pretty. It's got double rib details. Um, this this slipover is knit in one strand of Sunday, which, Sunday, which is a fingering yarn from Sunda Scarn, and then one strand of their tin silk mohair. It's knit on 3.5 millimeter needles and it has a 23 stitch gauge. Um, this pattern comes in only one size, um, just to be aware. So some options that I thought of to get a similar look to this, the first one that I thought of was the Unarmored Defense Cowl, which is a pretty new pattern by Kat Weaver, who you may be familiar with. She is has the Heather and Hops channel here on YouTube, and she makes lovely little patterns. This pattern is similar in that it has the big folded over collar, um, and the double rib details. Actually, no, this has the big folded over ribbed collar, and then it's a front and back kind of um, slip over with ties at the side. So, uh, and I know that Kat does a great job of making her patterns very size inclusive. This pattern is knit at a 24 stitch gauge on 3.75 and 4, millim four millimeter needles. So a little bit of a tighter gauge, but on larger needles. Um, it's also knit in DK weight yarn, which is pretty similar weight to what you would get with a fingering weight and a mohair held together. It's, a, it's got a really pretty kind of textured pattern on the front, which of course you could just do in stockinette if you wanted it to look a little bit more like the original. And then the other pattern, uh, another pattern that I found that was very similar is called the Apron Vest. It's a pattern by Adela Dutra. Um, it is a, it's knit at a larger gauge than the um, Amy Slipover, and it's at a 13.5 stitch gauge on six, five and six millimeter needles. But this is really similar in that it has kind of the ribbing around the neck. It's not a double folded collar, but I feel like you could make an adjustment by just knitting it longer and folding it over. It's just got a single ribbed collar. And then it does have the kind of similar strips down the side with the bow tie, the long ties under the arms that can tie into a bow. So I think this is probably the best dupe for the Amy slipover that I've seen. It's really cute, really pretty. If I didn't already have the Amy slipover pattern, um, this would be a great option if you're looking for a similar look. All right, the next pattern in the Sunday Scarn book is the Gia zipper sweater. So it's like a half zip sweater with kind of a large collar. It's got a drop shoulder construction and then some waist shaping that kind of tapers it in at the waist. This is knit on four millimeter needles at a 19 stitch gauge, and the recommended yarns are Double Sunday from Sunna Scarn and their Tin Silk Mohair. Um, the first dupe that popped out to me that I'd already had kind of in my head was the Ralph Zippy Gup, the Ralph Zippy sweater, which is a pattern by Tamara L. This is a really cute, it's also a zipper, half a zip sweater. It's got a nice big collar and it is a drop shoulder construction. Um, I had seen this pattern first on Instagram and it came out just pretty recently, just a couple of months ago. It's a paid for pattern um, and it's knit also with a worsted weight yarn at a 19 stitch gauge on four millimeter and 4.5 millimeter needles. So very similar gauge, um, very similar look, I would say. Um, the, this, yeah, the Gia zipper sweater from Sun is Garn has twist rib details, whereas um, the Ralph has just regular rib, but that's a really easy substitution. Um, and the Ralph zippy jumper, the pattern comes with instructions for striping it. If you wanted just a plain one, you could obviously omit the stripes, but I think that's a really interesting option. And if I think, I think I want to make this sweater, the Gia zipper sweater with the pattern that I have from the Sun is Garn book, but I really like the look of the stripes from the Ralph one. So um, yeah, this was the first one that I thought of. And then another pretty um, 
well-known pattern that's also similar is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. This one is less similar, I think, to the original. It's weighed with a, a raglan construction instead of a drop shoulder, um, but it does have the same twisted rib details. Um, and this one is knit with a worsted weight yarn and a mohair at a 15 stitch gauge. So a little bit of a chunkier gauge. Um, as always, this is a paid for pattern for Petite Knit, but I think it's a really cute option. And there are lots of great pictures of it on Instagram and on Ravelry if you want some more inspiration for this first sweater from Petite Knit. So that is it for the dupes I thought of for the Gia sweater. Um, the next one that I thought of is very... Um, is what I'm wearing right now. So this is the loose sweater. So it's a, I'll show you it because I'm wearing it. It's a raglan construction with some interesting, with double rib and then double rib accents on the raglan. Um, and it's got a split hem and it's just kind of knit at a loose gauge and it's really comfortable. The book actually has um, instructions for two different gauges. So you could knit it with double Sunday, which is a DK weight yarn and one strain of tin silk mohair on 4.5 millimeter needles to get an 18 stitch gauge. And they also have an option that's knit with pure gint, which is more of like a heavy DK light worsted weight yarn and a strand of mohair um, at a 16 stitch gauge on five millimeter needles. So um, I knit my kind of in between, but, but I could talk if you want to hear more about my version of this sweater, you can look at my previous video, which I will link up here for you if you would like to look. Um, but the first dupe that I thought of for this sweater, which is pretty familiar and honestly the only one because I feel it's the only dupe I listed because I feel like it's very very similar is the sweater number nine from my favorite things knitwear um it is a little different and then so the gs or the loose sweater has two kind of lines i'm not you can't super, see it super well on my version but it has two lines of the double ribbing um or the knit two pearl two rib on the raglan whereas sweater number nine just has one um but beyond that it's very similar it has the two by two rib details it has i can't I don't remember if this has a split hem. I don't think it does have a split hem, but that's a very easy modification. Um, and this is, but this is the sweater number nine is knit at a bit of a chunkier gauge. It's knit with a bulky weight yarn um, and a mohair held together. And it's knit at a 14 stitch gauge at seven millimeter needles. So a little bit chunkier, but overall very, very similar look. Um, so that's a very accessible option. I know my favorite thing knitwear is very popular. Again, kind of like the zipper sweater. There are tons of pictures of this or projects on Ravelry and on Instagram if you'd like to look for some inspiration. So that's my dupe for the loose sweater. The next sweater that I is in the book is the Guernsey sweater, which really is on trend with the like structured kind of knitting trends that we're seeing. Um, a lot right now with a lot of the textures and like this kind of sampler look that we're seeing a lot of on Instagram right now, or at least I'm seeing a lot of. Um, this is a, this sweater is knit with DK weight yarn and a mohair. So double Sunday and tin silk mohair on 4.5 millimeter needles. And you end up with an 18 stitch gauge. Um, and the dupe that I thought of immediately was the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit, which is one of her more recent designs, but it has very, very similar details. It's got kind of the crisscross panel. It's got some double ribbing. It's got some moss stitch, and then it's got a little bit of kind of cabling. So overall, I think these sweaters look very, very similar. Um, the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit has a mock neck collar, whereas the Guernsey sweater has a folded, a double folded collar. That's a very easy modification to make if that's what you're interested in. But overall, I think these two sweaters are very, very similar. The petite knit sweater is made with a worsted weight yarn um, and a mohair. So you end up with a 20 stitch gauge. So not too dissimilar. Um, and you use four millimeter needles for the bulk of the petite knit sweater. So Overall, very, very similar effect. Similar moss stitch and crosses, like very similar, I think. So that was the first one that I thought of. And then another one that I thought of that was that's just kind of cute um, that I had in my, or that I found on Ravelry, which kind of fits this structured, more like sampler effect, is the Liskenor sweater, which is a sweater by Samantha Swami, um, also known as the Stricka Chick. She's a new to me designer, but I found this sweater when I was just looking through patterns on Ravelry to find similar ones. Um, and this sweater is knit with air and weight yarn, section it with drops air uh, at a 16 stitch gauge. So on 4.5 and 
millimeter needles. So it also kind of has the same um, moss stitch and crisscrosses, but this this one has some really interesting textural details that I think are really cool and have a similar effect to the Guernsey sweater. All right, the next sweater or the next pattern in this book is the Frankie sweater, which is a really cute raglan sweater that has like really, really long rib, twisted rib detailing, um, both on the arm cuffs and on the body. Um, and this sweater reminded me a lot of the Boar sweater by Stricka Kaffa, who I really like. Her name is Tonya Hodna. Um, she's a Norwegian designer. I've made a pattern from her before. I made her Korshavn sweater, which is kind of like a basket weave texture. I really like her patterns. Um, but the Borna sweater has a very, very similar look to the Frankie sweater. Um, the Borna sweater from Tonya has a tall twisted rib collar, but again, you could just fold that over to make the folded over collar that um, the Frankie sweater has. Um, the Frankie sweater, there are also two options. You could knit it with uh, Senna Scar and Brush Shell Packa at, on four millimeter needles, which gives you an 18 stitch gauge. And they also have a version that is knit with Sendiscarn Kos, which is like the blown yarn, kind of similar to Drops Air. And that would, on 4.5 millimeters, you get an 18 stitch gauge. So a couple of options there. The Borna sweater by Stricka Kaffa, man, I'm just like struggling to get my words out today, is knit with Sendiscarn Pure Gint, actually. It's, so it's knit with a DK weight yarn and it has 20 stitches per 10 centimeters on four and 4.5 millimeter needles. But it's got like, other than that, it's like very, very similar. It's a raglan, it's got the twisted rib details, the long ribbing, it's really pretty. Um, and I, as someone who's knit these Tanya's patterns before, would really recommend, it's really pretty. Um, so that is the only dupe that I pulled for the Frankie sweater, just because I think they're so, so similar. All right, the next sweater in this book is the cherry, cherry dress, um, which I'm actually making right now. It's a really cute, um, deep yoked raglan with short sleeves and it's a really really long dress with a little split hem at the bottom um, and the dupe that I pulled for this is the Bina tunic by Gregoria Fibers. Um, this one the construction of these two is a little bit different but I think the overall effect is very similar. So the cherry sweater is knit with one strand of Sunday from Sunday's Garn and Tid Silk Mohair so it's a fingering weight and a mohair to get you kind of a DK weight and it ends up having a 21 stitch gauge on four millimeter needles. And the Gregoria Fibers uh, Bina tunic is knit with a DK weight yarn, but you get 17 stitches um, per 10 centimeters on five and six millimeter needles. So I think the main difference between these is that the Bina tunic is a drop shoulder construction with long sleeves and the cherry sweater or cherry dress is a raglan with short sleeves. I think if you wanted to modify Bina to have short sleeves, that would be a pretty easy modification. Um, Bina has twisted rib, Cherry has regular rib, but they're both very long, loose, kind of airy fabrics. The Gregoria fibers actually doesn't have ribbing at the bottom or a split hem, but again, I think that would be a pretty simple modification if you wanted to do that. Um, but otherwise, I feel like they have a very similar vibe. And actually, the Bina tunic was on my list before I found the Sunnis Garden book, just because um, I really liked the look of it. And then when I saw a similar pattern in this book, I was like really sold on it. So Bina tunic is kind of a looser dupe, but I think they're very similar and like, a, again, similar look. Um, the next pattern in the book is the Jolie sweater, which is a a uh, mohair only sweater with some really pretty texture and stripes. It's knit with two strands of Sunnis Garn Tin Silk Mohair on four millimeter needles to get a 19 stitch gauge. And the first dupe that I found was the Structure Loop Sweater by Maya Clovedal. Um, it's similar in that it has those like pearl bumps and stripes together, which adds an interesting texture. Um, the Jolie sweater is a raglan, whereas the structure loop sweater is a drop shoulder. Um, but other than that, I think they're very, they're really quite similar. The structured loop sweater is knit with on an, with uh, an Aran weight yarn, so not a mohair um, at a, but it's knit at the same gauge. So four millimeter needles and 19 stitch gauge, and it's knit with a merino angora yarn. But I think if you wanted to knit this sweater with two strands of mohair to get a similar effect, you probably could. Um, 
So that's the Structured Loop Sweater by Maya Quivdahl. And then the other dupe that I pulled was the Piper Sweater, which is by Caitlin Bartold. And it is knit in worsted weight yarn, 18 stitches per 10 centimeters. Um, and it has the same kind of pearl bumps and stripes effect as the original. Um, it's also a drop shoulder construction, um, but other than that, the look of it is very similar. And so yeah, those are two options to dupe the Jolie sweater. The next pattern is, oh goodness. The next pattern is the hazel dress which is a really cute oversized long sleeve dress with a drop shoulder construction. Um, it's knit in Senna's Garn Brush Shalpaca with on five millimeter needles to get a 16 stitch gauge. And the dupe that I pulled is My Favorite Sweater Dress, which is a pattern by Loopy Mango. Um, it is knit uh, with worsted weight yarn at a 9.5 stitch gauge, so it's much chunkier. Um, than the original, but it has the similar kind of like oversized, long sleeve, um, big, cozy kind of house dress look to it. Um, and it's also a drop shoulder construction. And so I think, honestly, they're really, really very similar besides the gauge. And that was the one dupe I pulled for this. I think they're similar enough, but you know, that's my suggestion. The next pattern is the cherry sweater which is basically just a shorter version of the cherry dress um i didn't actually list any dupes for this because it's a raglan i feel like there are so many raglan sweaters on revelry that you could just pick your favorite raglan pattern whether it be like the petite knit um is it the novice sweater no no what's the one the i can't remember the name of it now I don't remember, but the petite knit raglan sweater that's super popular and everyone makes and like Rebecca from the Crea Bay has made like 15 of them. Um, and then just, you know, you could kind of make the sleeves shorter and the yoke a little deeper to get the same effect or increase it for the sleeves. Any raglan pattern, I feel like you could get a very similar look to this. You just need to do the folded cuffs and folded hem. Um, so I didn't really feel like it was necessary to list dupes for this one, but just if you're curious, it's knit with Sunday, Sunday from Sunday Scarn and Tinsel Glow Hair on four millimeter needles to a 21 stitch gauge. So exactly the same gauge as the dress, just a shorter version. Um, and then there is a version with stripes. I feel like you could do like the, if you wanted a shorter sleeve stripe sweater, there's always like the um, petite knit Marseille sweater, although that's a drop shoulder and not a raglan. You could just do a, rag, a stripes in a raglan. So I feel like a short sleeve raglan is really pretty universal and you could just pick your favorite raglan sweater. I feel like most of us, if we're, if we've knit at least one sweater, it was probably a plain raglan sweater. So pick your favorite. There you go. Um, the next sweater in the, or the next pattern in the book is the Jules sweater, which is also knit in two strands of tin silk mohair, hair, or is it just one? Maybe it is just one. I think it's knit in just one strand of tin silk mohair on three millimeter needles to get a 24 stitch gauge. It's got a beautiful kind of patterned yoke um, with some twisted ribbing and then long floaty sleeves. And sorry, I'm trying to look at the right picture. It's a little bit of ribbing. It's very beautiful. I think a very obvious dupe for the sweater is the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose, which pretty much all of us have made before. So like most people have made a Ranunculus, um, but it's a very beautiful structured yoke sweater that's knit at a larger gauge. I feel like there are so many structured yoke patterns and I know Inga from Knitting Traditions, I believe she has a highlight on her Instagram of tons of structured yoke pattern recommendations that she grabbed, um, kind of crowdsourced. If I will link that in the show notes below for you as well, if you're interested in looking through that. But again, structured yokes are like classic and there are hundreds of patterns of them on Ravelry. Um, and that brings us to the end. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you knit any of the dupes that I've actually recommended and you want to tag me in your Instagram posts, please feel free to do that. Um, if you have any recommendations beyond what I talked about here, please leave them in the comments down below or put them on the Ravelry thread and I can add those in as well if you don't want to put them in the Ravelry thread. But yeah, so the, basically the purpose of this video was to show you that like if you see a pattern, but the if you see like a picture of something online that's 
um, but it's not accessible to you either because it's in a book that you don't want to buy the whole thing of, or it's in a language that you don't speak, that there are options for you. That's the lovely thing about knitting is that it's like very re replicable and there are so many beautiful patterns online that it's really, with just a little bit of research, you can find something that's very similar to what you're looking for. This even like if you see something in a store at like any ready to wear garment that you really like, that's a sweater, but you want to make it yourself just kind of, you know, snap a picture and do a little bit of research. So um, where there's a will, there's a way. But anyway, that is it. Gosh. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, leave some comments down below if you have any suggestions. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next one.